Knowledge is power, ladies and gentlemen, and when ignorance is viewed in this same way, then we're in trouble. So what I'm essentially telling you, the viewer, is that the, uh, the world is in trouble. <laughs> I'm sponsored by God. Published in the 1950s, Fahrenheit 451 is a sci-fi opus given to us by the hand of Ray Bradbury. The story revolves around Guy Montag, a firefighter in the future who does not put out fires but instead starts them. His job is essentially to find books and burn them because it is illegal to read books in this dystopian world that he lives in. However, after meeting a hippy-dippy free-thinking girl named Clarice, Montag's curiosity gets the best of him. He steals a book from a lady's home that was to be burned, which causes his ignorance to diminish considerably, while adversely causing his list of threats and problems and dangers to skyrocket. There is your rough outline of the premise. Now the real question is, does the story that revolves around said premise work? Yeah. Please allow me to explain to you why I think this book is really something. First of all, the sci-fi in this novel is really incredible because it actually became reality. Everyone in this novel has these little uh, seashell radio things that you can put in your ears and you can listen to music through. They're small, convenient, portable. I mean, Bray Bradbury basically saw the modern day earbuds coming from way back in the 1950s. Incredible foresight. There are also these entertainment rooms that people have in their houses with uh, screws screens on every wall. Kind of reminds me of the modern day American household which often has more TVs and video game consoles than people. Also, mechanical hounds, we kind of have those too. The fact that Bradbury could see this sort of tech from so far away, I think it's astounding, and I think it legitimizes his sci-fi more than others. But where Bradbury's foresight really shines is in the themes and cultural warnings that he preaches throughout the novel through the story. In this book, Bradbury presents a society that only reads headlines and refuses to read articles or books. You see, this society is obsessed with uh, uh, virtual reality, uh, personalities, television, groupthink, uh, materialism, and the belief that ignorance is bliss. However, when you read this book, it becomes very clear that a lot of the people of the society are really not blissful because they often overdose on drugs to escape from the seemingly perfect but really unbelievably imperfect reality that they live in. They live in a fake world. I wonder if there's ever been a civilization like that. Now please, let me make something very clear here. I am not saying that everyone in America is as far gone as the average person in Montag's neighborhood. However, you cannot deny that we are often far more influenced by what we watch or hear rather than by what we read or write. Personally, I think you have to be a reader to kind of become a critical thinker, and that's why I think America's political system is so crazy because we're a nation that doesn't really read anymore, and so... We have a crazy election cycle all the time. We elect the weirdest weirdos because we do not take the time to look into who they really are. We don't take the time to read up on them. And depression and suicide are far more pronounced in Western civilization than they've ever been. And that's, by the way, that's what I really mean by uh, uh, America. I mean, I mean Western civilization, you know. America's just, America's just a good example, though, of uh, what happens to a society when it entertains itself to death. Everyone becomes disconnected, lonely, and empty. Which is why Fahrenheit 451 is so great. It's about Guy Montag, who realizes all these terrible things about his society, uh, becomes a uh, reader slash critical thinker, and then decides to fight back against the current. It's awesome. Also, quick note, there's nothing wrong with entertainment in general, but when it's abused, it can be very harmful. That's, that's really what I'm trying to say. Another thing I liked about Fahrenheit 451 was Bradbury's prose. It was smooth, concise, beautiful, just, it was great writing, great writing. Also, the characters of Faber and Beatty were really, really good characters, especially Beatty. He was a, uh, a really, a really good villain who had some interesting theories about reading and the, his perspective on why reading should be illegal was very interesting. There's some great monologues by Beatty. Good antagonist. Really, really good antagonist. And the pacing was right on the mark. I was never bored and I mean there's just, there's some really intense and suspenseful scenes in this book that really, I mean it just propels the story forward expertly well. And in my opinion, I think the ending is quite good. As for negatives with Fahrenheit 451, uh, wait, what are you talking about, man? Fahrenheit 451 gets an A+.
I implore you to read this book. It really pinpoints why it is so necessary to read. Anyways though, guys, have you read Fahrenheit 451? And do you know the temperature at which book paper burns? Because I have no idea. Leave your answers and comments in the comment section below. And as always, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe. Tell your friends about the channel. And never forget to... Mm -hmm.